All rise. All those having business before the Honorable Randolph D. Moss, Judge of the United States District Court, in and for the District of Columbia, now holding this naturalization ceremony, will draw nigh and give their attention. God save the United States of America and its Honorable Court. Everyone, please remain standing for the presentation of the colors, the playing of the national anthem, and the retirement of the colors. Everyone, please be seated. Come to order. This honorable court is now in session. My, uh, my friend Brian Johnson really knows how to call a court to order. Um, I can't say that we open court every day in quite a, such a spectacular fashion uh, as we just did. Um, I am Judge Moss um, from the United States District Court for uh, the District of Columbia, and I'll be administering uh, the oath of citizenship. Uh, today. Uh, before we turn to the main event, I'd like to just take a minute, though, to welcome um, all of you, soon to be citizens, family members, friends, students, and teachers from uh, the Alice Deal Middle School, and other distinguished guests. Um, it is truly a joyous occasion today. I, I often say that um, uh, administering the oath of citizenship is the best thing I ever do. Um, uh, as a judge. But it, it's also a solemn um, occasion. Um, uh, today you're taking an oath, uh, the oath of citizenship. Um, and as you take the oath and as you watch your family members or friends take the oath, just take a second to think about what citizenship means. Um, if you pick up the dictionary, you'll see that the word citizenship means membership in a community. Uh, and in this context, it means membership in a community of about 300 million people. 
um, people of different heritages, religions, races, ideologies, education, economic means, and it takes work, real work and real tolerance to maintain a community like this one. Um, and I can think of no better place on the face of the earth to ponder what it means to be a citizen than where we are sitting or standing um, right now. Um, this is a room in which we're surrounded by documents like the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. And those documents embrace exactly what I'm talking about, about citizenship and the, the community that we're committed to um, uh, in this country together. Um, uh, so I am honored, exceptionally honored to be here with all of you today. I look forward to watching uh, all of you take the oath and to become citizens of the United States and to join our community of 300 million people. So thank you and we will be back shortly. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court, when your name is called, please stand, answer here or present, and remain standing. Luigi Enrique de la Giustina Roder, Venezuela. Aicha Akean Yildirim, Turkey. Yodit Agos Adij, Eritrea. Rohan Mozamdar, India. Sofia Faruz Gavaria Bartau, Argentina. Sarbenda KC, Nepal. Nikola Illich, Serbia. Claudia Ursula Hoffman, Germany. Engelbert Limjoy, Cameroon. Enrique Rivas Lopez, Bolivia. Yannette Lisbeth Vasquez Rivas, El Salvador. Pablo Andres Ruiz Rosas, Ecuador. Peter De Catu, Trinidad and Tobago. Christopher Eric Lane, United Kingdom. Sahar Majid, Pakistan. Petronila Celeste Rodriguez de Mercedes, Dominican Republic. Enrico Malucci, Italy. Ivy Agatha Lowe, Panama. Ayomide Adaronke Agundeco, Dalton, Nigeria. Mesilech Guxa, Ethiopia. Farouz Rahimi, Togo. Wendy Nia Law, Australia. Zane Zevgule Peña, Latvia. Luis Eduardo Alcatar Hernandez, Mexico. Your Honor, there are 23 applicants for naturalization. Each of the applicants have been examined by the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service, and the government has completed its investigation in each case. It has been determined that each applicant is eligible for naturalization at this time. I move that upon taking the oath of allegiance to the United States of America, each applicant present, having answered to his or her name, to include those prayers for name change, be granted naturalizations as citizens of the United States of America. All right, yeah, your motion is granted. Um, but please stand and um, uh, remain standing, and please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty of whom or which I have heretofore been 
a subject or citizen, subject or citizen. that I will support, I will support. And, defend and defend the Constitution and laws, Constitution and laws. of the United States of America. Against all, enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic. That, I will bear true faith that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, to the same. that I will bear arms, I will bear arms. On, behalf of the United States, on behalf of the United States when required by law, required by law. that I will perform, perform. non-combatant service in the armed services of the United States, when required by the law, that I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction, when required by the law, and that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, so help me God. Well done. Please welcome students from Alice Deal Middle School who will recite the preamble to the U.S. Constitution. Now, please welcome to the stage the Archivist of the United States, Dr. Colleen J. Shogan. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and newest members of our American family. Welcome to the National Archives. I'd like to thank the students from Alice Steele Middle School who beautifully recited the preamble to the Constitution and Judge Moss for administering the oath of citizenship. 23 of you took that oath, 23 of you from 23 different nationalities, all, all now proudly part of our American family. We are here on Constitution Day, the day 237 years ago when delegates signed their names to a constitution, a new constitution. We can debate our system of government. Certainly it has both strengths and challenges. But we should come together on this day to commemorate the genius of those who drafted our Constitution. Never before had there been a large, diverse, democratic republic like the United States of America. As a political scientist, I can tell you they faced an almost impossible task. They had to preserve the spirit of the American Revolution that had only ended four years earlier. That meant restricting 
the centralized authority of a national government and making sure that the power continued to reside with the American people. For that reason, the separation of powers was devised and created, which included checks and balances. However, the Constitutional Convention delegates also had to construct a government that was energetic enough to act, to provide for the common defense, to conduct foreign policy, to enforce the laws that were enacted. And for that reason, the framers created a strong executive, a legislature with enumerated powers, and an independent judiciary. Many of those who signed the Constitution didn't expect it would last more than a few generations, but they underestimated the flexibility and the resilience inherent in the system they created. 162 years ago today, the Civil War Battle of Antietam was fought in Maryland. It was the deadliest day in American history. Over 23,000 people were killed or wounded. And yet, amidst such a terrible anguish, the Constitution prevailed. The battle led President Lincoln to issue the preliminary Emancipation Proclamation and set the path for a more free nation. In January 2026, the National Archives will add that document, the Emancipation Proclamation, to permanent display inside this rotunda. It will take its rightful place along that wall because it represents the continued refounding of our republic. The expansion of rights to all Americans, this, <laughs> that's worthy of applause. <laughs> Thank you. The expansion of rights to all Americans is possible because our Constitution empowers citizens to work together to create a more perfect union. And now, as an American citizen, you are joining our ongoing democratic experiment. Our Constitution and the institutions it established relies upon each of us to do our part. Please remember that as you pursue your happiness as an American. Here at the National Archives, we are certainly striving to fulfill our mission in strengthening democracy. We do so by preserving, protecting, and sharing our nation's records. But these records are not just pieces of paper. They are tools to hold our government accountable and to inform us as we work together to establish that more perfect union. So let's continue together to honor our Constitution and to make our contribution to the American story. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Gary Vaynerchuk, also known as Gary V. Gary is living an extraordinary life. After immigrating with his family from Belarus in 1978, this purebred entrepreneur started his first business at age seven and has never stopped. Beginning with lemonade, baseball cards, and toys, before moving to wine, e-commerce, and best-selling books, Gary V has been an unstoppable whirlwind of entrepreneurial insight, foresight, and success. The CEO of VaynerMedia, the chairman of VaynerX, the creator and CEO of VFriends, and host of one of the top global podcasts, the Gary Vee Audio Experience, he is considered one of the leading global minds on emerging trends in culture, business, and the internet. A prolific investor, the founder and creator of VCon, a conference bridging business, pop culture, innovation, and technology, and even the owner of a major league pickleball team, Gary shares his insights with more than 44 million followers online. All of these accomplishments are indeed impressive, but I didn't invite Gary here because of them. I invited Gary to speak because his message, because of his message of positivity. These days I travel a great deal across the United States, and during my travels, I like to listen to Gary's podcast. I'm not a business entrepreneur, 
yet I find his message just as relevant for someone who, like me, leads a federal agency. What I appreciate the most is his emphasis on the fact that while success is important, it's how you play the game that matters. Good guys and good women don't finish last, and empathy is one of the most important qualities in any person, no matter what your job or position is. So please join me in welcoming Gary Vaynerchuk, and congratulations again to our new citizens. Good morning, everyone. Um, good morning. Uh, first and foremost to the 23 of you, uh, I'm shocked how emotional I am right now and how I was watching you. Um, 40, 46 years ago, my family came to this incredible country from the former Soviet Union. My parents sat on our green card for quite a long time, and so I actually vividly remember 25 years ago this day for me, and I just want to be one of the first people to congratulate you to joining this incredible family. Let's hear it for them one more time. I've had the great privilege of speaking on many stages, many podiums in my life, as you heard earlier, and that was so wonderful and it's such an honor to be here. Thank you, and, and Judge Moss, thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, as I built my journey in this incredible country, I've had the luxury of having the gift of gab, and so I've done plenty of speaking, but I, I say this from the bottom of my heart, this may truly be one of the most monumental moments of my speaking career. To welcome people into this incredible country is a tremendous honor. I thought a lot about what I wanted to say and I knew I had very little time, but what I, I really wanted to focus on was breaking down three incredible letters, uh, USA. And what those letters and what words I thought of when I thought about those letters represented for the journey that all of you are gonna go on, for the journey that the incredible middle schoolers are gonna go on. Actually, let's clap it up for the middle schoolers one more time. <clears throat> I decided to frame it up in that, and, and the first word I thought of when I thought about the letter U was unwavering. I think one of the incredible things about us still being here and the incredible journey this country's been on, it is a sheer miracle, if you understand your history, that this country exists and the profound impact this country has on the world. I snicker as someone that was born in the depths of communism when I listen to my fellow Americans speak about some of our shortcomings. There is no nation, there is no family, there is no business, there is no person that does not have some shortcomings. But when we overfocus on shortcomings, instead of understanding deep strengths, we get confused. And I would argue that it is unfortunate that there is confusion in the air as we stand here today. My friends, let there be no confusion. For the people that were lucky enough to be born in this great nation, I know that the 23 here, though they have tremendous love and tremendous feelings towards where they come from, and many probably still have family and great warmth towards it. They are not confused at all about the incredible strengths that this nation has, otherwise they wouldn't be sitting here today. I think it is incredibly important to understand the unwavering truth of the American world, and more importantly, the American dream, and most of all, the American impact. I'm not gonna sit here and assume that everybody here is a geopolitical nerd and understands what's going on in every facet of the world. But I will say this for the kids and for everybody else in this room, please, if you leave this little talk I have with anything, never, and I mean ever, be confused on how important this nation sits in the world and how much good this nation brings to the world. Next, S. 
There's a lot of words I thought about for S, but I'm gonna go with sympathy. I think one of the great traits of this country and one of the great traits that many of us can lead into as we continue to go through our lives is being sympathetic to others. I think the glue that holds us together when we are at our best, when we are able to contain so many different people, like the judge said, from different backgrounds and income levels and interests and ideologies, our empathy, our compassion, and our sympathy for each other must be stronger than ever and is an incredibly beautiful trait. Leaning in to your emotional softness, to your sympathy, is the great strength of navigating life and I think is foundational in the history. Our true empathy, compassion, and sympathy for the rest of the world, not just within ourselves, is our greatest strength and it's absolutely what I think about when I think about the United States of America. And finally, A. This one was very easy for me. Ambition. To me, the American dream, the journey my family came from. My father came to this country not speaking a word of English, worked making $2 an hour, stocking shelves in a liquor store. But his decision to come to this country changed the course of my life and our family's life forever. I could never repay or thank him enough for that very brave decision. His ambition created a foundation. My ambition created the next chapter and the ambition of the people that follow me will continue to build and hopefully replicate some of the incredible families that have lived in this incredible nation. The sheer ambition that all of you have and your future families have and the fact, and this is so darn important, the fact that there is room for your ambition in this great country should never be forgotten. Today, I stand with this incredible honor to give this speech in these hollowed halls because of my talents, entrepreneurship, and my ambition. Both of my grandfathers in the country that they were born for their ambition for being entrepreneurial spent years in jail in the USSR. That is the difference of our country. And today, you start day one of being part of that and today the rest of us continue to have the luxury to be inside of that and that should never, ever be underestimated. I thank you, I wish you nothing but happiness and health and welcome to the United States of America. Now, please welcome to the podium the Honorable Randolph D. Moss. Well, it is my great, great honor to join the archivist uh, and Mr. Vaynerchuk in welcoming you all as citizens in this country. And, and we have events like this, and I, I, I should say we have events like this. We don't have events like this very often in, the, in this spectacular place, and I don't know how you all were lucky enough to be chosen to have your naturalization ceremony here, but we have events like these, like naturalizations, in part, and there's, there's ceremonies that require us just to pause from the rush of life and everything else we have to get done with the day, and just to step back for a moment and to appreciate um, what we have and to put things um, in perspective. And I have to say um, uh, to the archivist, I am so happy to hear um, that the archives is gonna be displaying the Emancipation Proclamation in this hall. I've had the privilege of seeing that document once and it was probably five or six years ago and the archives only brings it out um, on rare occasion because it is such a fragile document. And my recollection is, is that Lincoln wrote it on very poor quality paper on two sides of the paper. And you can actually look through the paper and you can see his writing on the other side of the paper. And it's a piece of paper. It's a piece of paper with handwriting, not a very expensive piece of paper. And it changed the world. Um, it changed the lives of so many people. It, it made this country take a step forward um, um, in a way that changed um, our nation fundamentally. And there were just words um, that Lincoln put on a piece of paper. And words, and the words that are around us, have enormous 
consequences. Um, and your citizenship um, has enormous consequences. Um, the Constitution, um, to which you have now taken an oath to uphold, has enormous consequences. And so, and taking the opportunity just to step back and think a little bit about what this all means. Being a U.S. citizen is not merely, doesn't simply mean that you um, are now subject to the laws of the United States and the Constitution, and that you can now vote, which is obviously a very important privilege, um, or that you can serve on juries, which as a judge is something very important to me uh, to see. But it means now that you are truly part of the fabric of the Constitution of the United States. Um, as you all know from your um, uh, uh, civics tests um, and preparation for, uh, for the um, um, naturalization process, we have no kings or queens in this country. There is only one sovereign uh, in the United States. And you all know who that sovereign is. It is we, the people. And that is you. You are now the sovereigns in the United States. And we only have one class of citizenship in the United States. There's only one class of citizen. And each of you today is as much of an American citizen as any person who can trace their roots back to uh, the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Um, but to my mind, merely equating naturalized citizens with those um, who, like me, were lucky enough to obtain their citizenship through the efforts of their parents or their grandparents or their great-grandparents uh, understates what is so extraordinary about today's event and what you all uh, have done. Be because naturalized citizens like you, you bring something important to this country. Um, each of you has devoted yourself to the substantial effort required to become a citizen. Each of you made a choice to pursue citizenship. Each of you made the choice to take the oath of, all, uh, oath of citizenship today. Each of you brings your own aspirations, ambitions, um, um, vision of citizenship. Um, and by your effort today, um, you remind all of us of what it actually means to be a citizen. Um, as someone else um, observed uh, many years ago, by taking the oath of citizenship um, and by becoming naturalized, you reinvigorate all of our ideals. Um, uh, ideals that we can trace back to the Declaration of Independence, I'll have to see which side that's on, um, uh, the Constitution, uh, the Bill of Rights, um, the ideals that link us together, um, the ideals that you just took an oath to defend. Um, and you help us remember where we came from. Um, uh, my father's mother came here from Poland, and uh, my father's father came here from Lithuania. Um, and as I look at all of you. Um, I see people who've taken the oath, and I see people who came from 23 uh, different countries across every single continent on Earth, with the exception of Antarctica. Um, I've yet to see anybody from Antarctica who had a naturalization. Um, uh, but I see people from Central America, and South America, and Europe, and Asia, North America, and Africa. Um, I see different generations um, uh, of people. Um, I see people who followed very different paths uh, uh, to the United States, but most significantly, I see Americans. Um, naturalized citizens like you bring talents and skills of all kinds to the United States. Perhaps the greatest scientist ever, and I think I probably should drop the perhaps from that sentence, Albert Einstein was a naturalized U.S. citizen, as was Alexander Graham Bell. Um, the great director, Alfred Hitchcock, was a naturalized citizen. Great actors and actresses like Anthony Hopkins and Greta Garbo and Cary Grant were naturalized. Performers like Mikhail Brishnikov, Joni Mitchell, Alanis Morissette, Eddie Van Halen were all naturalized. Comedians like Dan Aykroyd, Bob Hope, Martin Short, Tracy Ullman, and Jim Carrey were naturalized citizens. Alex Trebek from Jeopardy was a naturalized citizen. Great athletes like Wayne Gretzky, Nadia Comaneci, Sammy Sosa and Patrick Ewing were naturalized. Journalists like Peter Jennings and writers like Abraham Verghese, Vladimir Nabokov, Anne Rand, Isaac Asimov, and Halid Hosseini were all naturalized. Diplomats like Henry Kissinger and Madeleine Albright were naturalized. And scholars like John Kenneth Albright, uh, Galbraith and Hannah Arendt 
were naturalized. And that list goes on and on and on. And I'm confident that in this room, there are those of you who will add to that illustrious list. But that's not what matters most. Um, as Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter, who was himself a naturalized US citizen, uh, observed about 80 years ago, uh, and he, he said, the ultimate heroes are not the conspicuous naturalized citizens, but rather the multitudinous other people who have brought and today bring the dream of America nearer to living truths. So as you go forth, um, as the newest citizens, um, I urge you to remember every day what that means. Uh, it means being part of a community, as I, as I mentioned during my opening remarks, and it means treating others, including those with whom you hold dramatically different views and perspectives, as valued members of the same community that you are now a member of. It means respecting your fellow citizens so we can live together as, just as Frankfurter put it, in a gracious society. And it means participating in public life and doing so with dignity and responsibility. So I congratulate each of you on becoming a US citizen, but more importantly, I thank you for all you have done and all that you must continue to do to add to our shared national community. You have my admiration and my best wishes. Close the ceremony. This honorable court is now adjourned.